Hi everybody and welcome back. Now in this lesson, we're going to talk about some other Ruby data types. Specifically, we're going to be speaking about arrays and ranges. We'll kick off with arrays. And arrays are a list of elements in a particular order. Understanding arrays is core to a good working relationship with Ruby and with Rails. So here I am here in my terminal, and as you can see, I have my Rails console open. And let's now take another look at a string. So let me just simply enter in a string here. Tony Staunton, so my name, and you can feel free to enter in your name. So a simple string. Now let's append on a method, dot split. This method now is going to split our string into a two element array. So let's hit enter. Now, as you can see, we have just created a two element array. And how do I know it's a two element array? Well, as you can see, it starts and ends with square brackets, and we have two strings inside separated by a comma. So now we have an array of two strings. The split method divides a string into an array by splitting the white space. But we can also split using other indicators. Let's take a look. Let's create a new string. So something again very simple. So Tony x lives x here. Close our string, dot split. And now what do we want to divide this string on? Well, obviously we want to do it on the x. So let's put in after split bracket single quotation mark, X quotation mark, close bracket, and hit enter. There we go, three element array divided on the X. So as you can see, this would be very valuable using comment separated values or CSV files that are all separated or divided out using commas. Like most other programming languages such as Python, elements in a Ruby array have an index of zero. And what does that mean? Well, this means that the first element of an array starts at zero, then one, then two, then three, and so on. So if we just go back to this array here, Tony comma lives comma here, if we just have a look at this array, the first element of this array, Tony, starts at zero, then lives is one, and here is two. So what does that mean for us? Well, let's create a new array and take a look. So to create an array, we first type in a variable, so a equals square brackets, Let's give this array numbers, so 10, 11, 12. There we go, close square brackets, hit enter. Now we have an array of three numbers. Let's access the first number in this array. And as I just said, that is done using zero. So a square brackets, zero. What do you think this should give us? It should give us 10, and indeed it does. So as you can see, Ruby uses square brackets to access arrays. Let's try another one, a square brackets one. What do you think this will give us? 11, a square brackets two, 12, perfect. Let's try and access an element that is not in the array. a square brackets three, nil, empty because there is none. Now let's take a look at another example, a square brackets minus one. So what do you think this is gonna do for us? Well, if you guess that it gives us the last element of the array, you're correct. Unlike most other programming languages, Ruby provides cinnamons for commonly accessed elements. And what does that mean? Let's just type in a. As you can see, we have our full array here. Now let's go a dot first, 10, perfect. a dot second, 11, a dot last, 12. So a little bit easier to remember than the square bracket notation we just used a moment ago. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say a dot last equals equals, so a double equals sign, and let's say a minus one, which as we know, accesses the last element of an array. True, so what does that mean? Well, we've just used the equality comparison operator. So two equal signs next to each other is a comparison operator. And what that does is compares one value to another. So what we've just done here is compared the last element of the array with a dot last, with again, the last element of the array with a minus one. This comparison operator is the same in many programming languages. Just like strings, arrays respond to the length method. So let's take a look. First thing we need to do is create a variable. So x equals a dot length. And we're familiar with this method. So here we assign the length or the number of elements in a to x. So let's hit enter. So three, so x now has the value of three, which is the length of our array a. Now, how do we know that? So let's just go x, use our comparison operator, three, true. There are three elements in our array and x has the value three. So is x one? False. So x, let's have a look at another Boolean operator, not one. True. Is x greater than one? 
it is, or is x less than 2? False. Perfect. Arrays also respond to other methods. Let's take a look. Let's just remind ourselves of what's in our array again by typing a. There we go. 3 digits, 10, 11, 12. So we know that we have numbers in an array, but let's say we didn't know that. How could we figure out if a is empty or not? Well, we simply type a.empty. Question mark. False. As we know, a is not empty. Let's say we want to figure out if a contains a certain element or not. So let's say we want to figure out if a contains the digit 10. a.include. So does a include 10? Oh, I forgot my bracket here just before the bracket starts. So there we go. a.include question mark 10. It does. So let's now say a.sort. 10, 11, 12. So that sorts ascending. a.reverse. That sorts descending, a dot shuffle. There we go, mixes up our digits. And let's just print out a again. Okay, so let's just talk about this for a moment. So here we have a dot shuffle, which rearranged our numbers into a random order, which gave us 11, 12, and 10. But when we printed out our array again, simply a, we got 10, 11, 12. So all of these methods that we use on the array do not permanently alter the array. And that's very important to remember. If we want to permanently alter the array, or as we would say, mutate an array, we can use the following. So let's just confirm that A is in the correct order. It is. Now let's say A.shuffle. But this time we use exclamation mark or the bang character. Uh, that just shuffled into the same order. So let's just try A.reverse. Bang. Or exclamation mark. There we go. Now let's print out A again. And as you can see, the order of A, or the order of our array, has been permanently changed or mutated. Now, so how can we add to our array? Well, to add elements into an array, we simply use the push method. Let's have a look at that. A.push. So what do we want to push in there? Let's push in the digit 13. There we go. 12, 11, 10, 13. So as you can see, it is not added on in numerical order. It is simply appended to the end of the array into index position 3. Now there are other ways to add to an array, such as the shovel operator. And the shovel operator looks like this, two less than symbols. So how do we use that? Let's say a shovel operator 14. Perfect. Let's chain two shovel operators together. So a 15, 16. Great, that worked perfectly. Now let's add in something other than a number. Let's try a quotation marks Tony. Oh, Tony. See how this works. Excellent. Let's just print out our A again. There we go. Everything we've added is now in our array. In Ruby, arrays can contain different types, as we've just seen. This is unlike arrays in other programming languages. So we've seen split, but there is also a join. Let's take a look at an example. So we would use a.join. There we go, we have combined everything into our array, but not permanently altered, as we know from a previous example. We can also specify, just like we did in split, what character we want to join an array on. So for example, a.join brackets comma. So we know our array is split out by commas, so we could say join on the comma. And actually I've made a typo there, I need to put my comma inside quotation marks. There we go. And as we can see now, what we have outputted is one long string separated out by commas. Let's now discuss what Ruby calls ranges. Ranges are very related to arrays. We can convert ranges to arrays, which helps us understand them. Let's create a range. So to create a range, we simply type, let's create a range here, 0 dot dot 9. So now we have a range of 0 to 9. Next, let's change this range to an array. How do we do that? Well, we simply start off with brackets, 0 dot dot 9. That's our range. Then we say dot two underscore a. So two an array. And you have to use brackets in this example as we have. And look at that, very nice. We've converted our range zero to nine into an array containing all the digits zero to nine. And in this example, we've used the two underscore a method. Now ranges are particularly useful when we need to pull elements from an array. So let's take a look at that. In this example, let's say b equals percentage w, I'll explain this in a moment, percentage w brackets Tony Staunton. 
Is that? Have I spelled my name right? Tony Staunton. Let's hit enter. And look at that. We've just created an array, a two element array, using my name, Tony Staunton. So the characters here, percentage W, are used to create a string array. Now, let's access this array and see what elements are in it. So B, square brackets, zero to one. Hit enter and we get Tony Staunton. So here we're using the range zero to one because we know we only have two elements in the array, zero and one. So we're using the range zero to one to access every element in the array. So you could imagine here where we created B, we might have 50 names in it, which would be 100 elements if every name had to had a first name and a last name. And we could access that entire range by just simply typing B zero to 50. So as I just said, ranges are particularly useful when we need to pull elements from an array. And again, if we have a large array or even a, an array with an unknown number of elements, we can use index minus one at the end of the range to select every element from the start to the end. And what would that look like? Well, let's take another look. So this time let's create an array C equals. Now our range, what we give our range here, let's go zero dot dot 100, zero to 100. Let's use the method two underscore A Hit enter, and there we go, an array with 101 elements. Why 101? Because we start at zero. Now, let's type in C, square brackets, zero, dot, dot, minus one. What's that gonna do for us? That gives us the exact same output, but we already knew that there were 101 elements in this array. Imagine we did not know that, or we had not seen the previous example, by typing in C, square brackets, zero, dot, dot, minus one, close the square brackets, we are able to return the entire length and every element in the array. So a very helpful example there when dealing with an unknown number of elements in an array. Let's try another example, C, this time let's say five dot dot minus one. Close the square brackets. And as you can see, our array now starts at five. Let's take a look at another example, C square brackets five dot dot brackets, C dot length minus one close brackets, close square brackets. Here we are explicitly using the array's length. Hit enter, exact same thing again. Only this time, as I said, we're explicitly using the array's length. We can also create ranges using characters. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. Brackets, quotation marks, a dot dot z. Close brackets, dot, the method two underscore a, so convert this range into an array, hit enter, and there we go. We have an entire array now of the alphabet. Okay guys, I think we'll leave it there for this lesson. So in this lesson, we looked at arrays and ranges and some very helpful examples of using both. In the next lesson, we're gonna take a look at blocks. And blocks are one of Ruby's most powerful features. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next lesson.